Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at dynamic polar patterns. So making those dynamic, adding more features as the part grows and taking them away as it shrinks. Now this is a question that was asked on the back of the linear pattern. So we use the same or similar technique with the linear pattern. And the question was asked, how do you do that with the polar pattern? That originated from one of the understanding free CAD tutorials regarding formulas and linking parts with formulas. So we're going to be looking at actually how to create that. Also going to be introducing something new, which is called a reference constraint. So this constraint, its only purpose is to be used as a reference and it can be used in equations or formulas. So let's have a look at this technique and how we can create such a model. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So we're in FreeCAD and we've started a new document. I can jump over to the part design and we're going to create a simple sketch in here with a body. So create a body and create a sketch. You can use the XY plane, hit OK. And we've got the auto constraints on and we're going to create a circle. So I can constrain it to that point in the center like so. I'm going to close that and pad this up with the pad icon or use the pad here. We're just going to give this some arbitrary length here. So five millimeters or two millimeters, whatever you want to put in there. So we've got the pad here. We're going to create a feature upon here now. So I'm going to click this face and create a sketch. And I'm going to add a circle. And we're going to attach the circle to this line here, like so. Now we need to offset this from this edge. So I'm going to use this point and this point and create a length in here. So the length is 35. 0.95 at the moment. Let's place this at 30 millimeters. So it's 30 millimeters away from there. We're also going to name that. So this is the offset from the center. Just going to name it offset. Remember in casing matters when we're using these named parameters in here, these name constraints. So make sure you stick to one type of casing. I've used just a capital O for the offset. So that's done. Let's hit close. We're going to pad that. We can pocket it if we so desire, but I'm going to use a pad in here. I'm just going to give it a two millimeter pad. So something quite small in here, just to demonstrate how this works. So we've got our pad. We've got our feature that we want to create an array of. So I'm going to click on the pad and I'm going to come over to the polar pattern feature, also available for part design, apply a pattern, polar pattern. And what I'm going to do is increase the number of polar patterns in here. So I'm going to do it so they almost touch. So we're going to go for something like 20. Go a bit more, 22. Can I get another one out of there, 23. Twenty-four, they are almost touching there. So we're going to go for that one. Obviously, you can pick what you want. I'm just going to use this as an example. If I had them touching, then when we resize this and they're still touching, you can see how that's working. So we've got our polar pattern in here, and this is where we start putting in the parameter. So we've placed a parameter in here that's on offset away from the center. So click on the polar pattern and look at the occurrences. It's twenty-four. So we need to know that at our offset, which is in this pad, using an offset of 30 millimeters, we should get 24 polar patterns going around here. So we need to use this formula here and make this equal to 24 with some kind of formula using the offset. So I'm going to use 24 times and then I'm going to use sketch 001 which is where our offset is, constraints. I'll press the down key to actually select them. And I'm just going to use dot offset in there. Warning, unit discarded. So it's discarded the millimeters there. 
and we need to divide that by our offset, which was 30 millimeters. Again, we've got the warning unit discarded, and this equals 24, which is our original. So we okay that. That means if our offset changes, come into that sketch and change this to half. So let's change this to 15. Okay that. Close that down. Then we come into our polar pattern. We can see we've got 12 there. So originally it was 24. Now we're down to 12. So we're giving ourselves a baseline and you can see how these are almost touching exactly the same. So let's come back into that sketch and set this to, let's set this to 40. And where will this end up? So this will end up at the actual diameter. So let's close that and we should see them sit there touching each other. So they're touching each other around there. So enough pads have been added to allow this to touch around the outside. The trouble really is, is that we've used the sketch, we've used the parameter to offset it from, from here, but we've got no reference to the diameter of this. This is good if we wanted to have the same diameter, but we want to change how far away these features are away from the center. But what would we do if we wanted to change this diameter? Well, there is a really easy way without actually going back and modifying everything what we've just done. And also it introduces us to something called a reference constraint. We take this constraint and double click on it. We've got a little checkbox here, which is called reference. If we click that, what happens is you've noticed that the constraint has changed. It's now changed to two degrees of freedom. If I uncheck that, it's got one degrees. It's added another degrees of freedom. What's actually happened is that that constraint's changed to a reference constraint, meaning that we can change this and that reference constraint actually moves. Because it's moving, it's changing the underlying formula as well. So I can change this down to say 20 or near to 20 and hit close. And this changes as well. We've got a constraint in there, but it's not actually constraining it's been used as a reference. This allows us to import this diameter here. So I've referenced the external geometry by importing the geometry and use a line that connects up or even just a constraint. Actually, we will use a line in here because I want to place the line point on line constraint there or point on object constraint and alter constraint to a quincy constraint against this circle. And we'll change this to have a horizontal constraint and also make sure it's got to be construction geometry. Therefore, I'll use that with an insert length and I want a 10 millimeter offset from this point here. You can see how this is changing. So we can change this to four millimeter and this will change. So we've got this nice reference in how far this is away from here. If we close that, then this takes effect. Therefore, when we change our pad, come in here, we've got this diameter here, which I haven't constrained yet. Let's put a diameter on here and set the diameter to 90 and hit OK, hit close. Then when we change the diameter of that sketch, 90 millimeters there to say 50, and hit close, everything else changes as well. So you can see they're just touching. It's removed some of these features, and we've got this polar pattern that is dynamic. It can increase and decrease, and we get more parts added or removed depending on the diameter of the external. And we can do some minor modifications. So we can come into the sketch and change this to say about five or three millimeters. Let's just go for five millimeters there and close up. So you can see how customizable this object is. So I hope that's answered the questions. 
and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content, and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.